Hope you're well. Welcome to the crypto education section. In today's um, section, we will be covering liquidity pools. Uh, liquidity pools are important for us to understand uh, because people that come from tra traditional finance have always traded in the sort of order book model. And in DeFi, we have the, you can say, you can say pools of, uh, of liquidity that we sort of swap through and, and, and provide uh, to these many, many tokens. So it's important for us to understand what liquidity pools are. So as we define it here, uh, liquidity pools in essence are pools of tokens that are locked in smart contract. They are used to facilitate trading by providing liquidity and are extensively used by some of the decentralized exchanges aka DEX is like Uniswap. One of the first projects that introduced liquidity pools was Banker, but then but they became widely popularized by Uniswap. So, so why do we need liquidity pools? Now, this is really, really important, right? Why do we need buyers and sellers? Right? Why do we need this? If you're familiar with any standard crypto exchange like Coinbase or Binance, you may have seen that their trading is based on the order model. This is also the way tr uh, traditional stock exchanges such as New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ work, right? So you have buyers and sellers. In this order book model, buyers and sellers come together and place their orders. Buyers, aka bidders, try to buy a certain asset to, uh, for the lowest price possible, whereas sellers try to sell the same asset for the highest as possible. For trades to happen, both buyers and sellers have to converge on price. This can happen by either a buyer bidding higher or a seller lowering their price. But if, but what if there is no one willing to place their order at a fair price level? What if there are not enough coins that you want to buy? That is where market makers come to play. In essence, market makers are enti entities that facilitate trading by always willing to buy or sell a particular asset. By doing, the, uh, by doing that, they provide liquidity so that the user can always trade and they don't have to wait for another counterparty to show up. So I, I hope that kind of explains uh, the, the sort of market maker, the automated AMMs that we have in our, in, in, in our you can say, DeFi ecosystem, where, where, where you have a buyer who wants to buy at a higher price, a seller who wants to... Uh, a buyer who wants to buy at the lowest price, a seller that wants to buy it, uh, sell at the highest price, and there is, you know, a, a, a stalemate between the two. That's when the market maker comes through and performs um, a, a a renaissance and makes a swap happen. So this is the difference uh, that you have in liquidity pools. So how do liquidity pools work? Let's look into this now. Okay, so now, so now that we understand why we need liquidity pools in decentralized finance, let's see how they actually work. In its basic form, a single liquidity pool holds two tokens, right? So it'll hold something like Uni token and ETH. And each pool creates a new market for that particular pair of token, DAI versus ETH. DAI pair with ETH can be a good example of a popular liquidity pool on Uniswap, for example. When a new pool is created, the first liquidity provider is the one that sets the initial price of the asset in the pool. The liquidity provider is in incentivized to supply an equal value of both tokens to the pools. If the initial price of tokens in the pool diverges from the current global market price, place, price it creates an instant arbitrage opportunity that can result in lost capital for the liquidity provider. This concept of supplying tokens in a correct ratio remains the same for all other liquidity providers that are willing to add more funds to the pool later. LP tokens. When liquidity is supplied to a pool, i.e. the liquidity provider, receives special tokens called LP tokens in proportion to how much liquidity they supplied to the pool. When a trade is facilitated by the pool, a 0.3% fee is proportionally distributed amongst all the LP token holders. If the liquidity provider wants to get their underlying liquidity back, plus any accrued fees, they must burn their LP tokens. 
So yeah, each token swap that a liquidity pool facilitates results in a price adjustment adjustment according to a deterministic price algorithm. This mechanism is also called an automated market maker (AMM). A liquidity pool across different protocols may use a slightly different algorithm, right? So now we're getting into like market maker stuff. Basic liquidity pools, such as used by Uniswap, use a constant product market maker algorithm that makes sure that the product of the quantities of the two supply tokens always remain the same. On top of that, because of the algorithm, a pool can always provide liquidity, no matter how large a trade is. The main reason for this is that the lar algorithm as asymptotically uh, increases the price of the token, sorry for butcher that word, as the desired qu uh, quantity increases. The math behind the constant product market maker is pretty interesting but to make sure this article is not too long i'll save it for another time so yeah th that kind of explains how amms work how automated market makers work uh, so now let's learn about the different types of liquidity pools right uh the liquidity pool that we just described are used by uniswap and they are the most basic form of liquidity pools other projects iterated on this concept and ca uh, and came up with a few interesting ideas. So 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 th there's been other projects apart from Uniswap that have different ways of of, of doing uh, liquidity providing, right? So let's look into this Curve one for example. So Curve for example realized that the automated market maker mechanism behind Uniswap doesn't work very well for assets that should have a very similar price, such as stable coins or d different flavors of same coins like 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 wrapped eth or, or s eth curve pool by implementing a slightly different algorithm are able to offer lower fees and lower slippage when exchanging these tokens the other idea for different liquidity uh, pools come from balancer that realized that we don't have to limit ourselves to have only two assets in a pool and in fact balancer allows for as many as eight tokens in a single liquidity pool. So yeah, and of course, like with everything in DeFi, we have to remember about potential risks uh, besides our standard DeFi uh, risks like smart contract bugs, uh, admin keys and systematic risks. We have to add two new ones, impermanent loss and liquidity pool hacks. More on this in the next article. So, so yeah, so, so this kind of gives you a little insight of what liquidity pools are and why we use them. I'm going to show you guys a, a, a two to three minute clip from a Finematics that basically shows a more visual, um, you can say, outlook of what a liquidity pool is. So if you guys can just hold with me, uh, just give me one second. Are pools of tokens that are locked in a smart contract. They're used to facilitate trading by providing liquidity and are extensively used by some of the decentralized exchanges, aka DEXs. One of the first projects that introduced liquidity pools was Bancor, but they became widely popularized by Uniswap. Before we explain how liquidity pools work under the hood and what automated market making is, let's try to understand why we even need them in the first place. If you're familiar with any standard crypto exchanges like Coinbase or Binance, you may have seen that their trading is based on the order book model. This is also the way traditional stock exchanges such as New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ work. In this order book model, buyers and sellers come together and place their orders. Buyers 